AI news that might blow your mind. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? It's another beautiful day to talk about AI. Also, don't forget to join my live stream tomorrow where we're going to experiment with AI and talk more about the subjects of today. Let's get started. So first, I want to hit this off with a post by Ellen T. This is about Chen Mo AI. And look at the stunning scenes this AI can create. This is absolutely mind blowing the action, but also the precision you have in here. Video AI is becoming better and better. Here's another tweet by Chenmo AI themselves. They call their AI model replay. And here we have another video about that. So again, you can see really stunning results that are created by this video AI model. It is easy to prompt for you see here. It's a very short prompt, not many details. And bam, right away, it starts to create these beautiful videos. Very nice motion, but also very flicker free and nice camera movement also. So, so this is really impressive. And the cool thing here is you can actually go to the Chenmo website. You can sign up for free and try it right now. And this, what you can see here right now is the first prompt I have ever tried, woman on a beach. And this is the first role. So this is no cherry picking. This is actually how that looks. I got to say, pretty impressed by that. But let's go on here to the next news I want to show you. This is from FOFR on Twitter again. And he is mixing together multiple techniques. So you can see here one thing he calls controlism. And this is about using the QR code control net model to create patterns inside the image. So when you squint your eyes here, you will see that the clothing of the four people sitting here creates the word FOMO, which stands for for fear of missing out. Now next he upscaled the image and then he used it in Pika Labs. I have a video here about Pika Labs and how you can create videos with that. It's also very, very nice. And afterwards he upscaled the video to give it a higher resolution. Now for that he was using Topaz Labs AI for video upscaling. Let's go to the next tweet by Bilava Situ, and he's talking about Gaussian splitting. Now, what that is, is to use your smartphone with an app, and this will create a point cloud out of all of the data that the camera is seeing around you from the different images you take. And from that, as you can see here, you can not only create a 3D model, it also can move. So the scan can actually also be a video movement where you can move around afterwards with your VR headset. So that's absolutely stunning that you're able to do that. This is a huge application for bringing video into the VR world so that you can move through the scene after it has been filmed. Really stunning. Now, another thing that's really interesting here is because this is using a point cloud, the resolution of the 3D models is much higher than with other technologies. Here we have another post by Bilaval C2. He, he talks more about the technology of the Gaussian splitting and makes an explanation down here. But the interesting thing is also the video he has down here. So let's look at that in detail. So this is a site in New Delhi, again, scanned with the same technology of the point cloud. And and as you can see, this has been turned in a 3D model where you can fly through the scene like as if you're using a drone. So again, very impressive technology. And here now later in the video, you can actually see the point clouds, these millions of different dots that are used as a base for the 3D model that of course also takes the texture from the images that have been taken. And here you can see how the images look from the different perspectives so that the model can figure out where the 3D object is and how the space is actually looking. Here we have another example. And when we stop the video, you can see in the background how the person was actually filmed in 360. So you can see that he's standing in one of these camera balls. So all of these lights you can see behind him, they are dozens of camera filming the movement of that person at the same time from all angles around the character. But you can also see a person down there in the corner using their VR headset to move around the scene and seeing the action from all kinds of perspectives and 
be free in their movement. Really, really cool. If you want to, there is also a GitHub page for the Gaussian splatting technology. So you can check that out, scroll down and read more about the technology and how to use that. Next, let's talk about a tweet from Angry Penguin PNG. This is about text to texture. And as you can see in this video here, this is Fabricator by MOD. And here we can put the text prompt in there. We have our fabric here over a ball. And now when we play the video, see a text is entered, a mesh is selected, and some characteristics of the fabric. And then the AI is rendering the texture over the object. And on the right side, you can adjust a different normal map, height map, and so on to give the texture a certain quality to that. So that's also very interesting and really, really nice. Now, of course, when you think about what is actually happening here, a texture is, of course, just a 2D picture. So what this is rendering is basically a 2D tile that then is then automatically applied to the texture of this fabric. And then on the right side with these sliders here, you can give different characteristics to that texture. As you can see here with the normal map, with the height map, how reflective and shiny is it? How matte is the fabric? You can also adjust here the lightning with different lightning maps you can select so that you have a different light for the surrounding. This is more interesting for the preview, of course, in that case. And as you've seen before on the left side, you can give different characteristics before you render it for the AI. For example, here you can select for the fabric construction type and select from a list of different fabric characteristics. For example, here it says foil print. And then below you can also select the resolution and you can even enter a seed image to give an idea to the AI what you want to have. And this, of course, can really speed up the process of creating these textures for your scenes, for your games, for your animations. So this is really, really, really nice. And of course, gives AI a real application in the entertainment, arts and creative industries. So that is also a very important part of that. Now here we can see the different maps that are part of the texture. So when we slow that down a little bit, let's go a little bit back here. You can see, for example, the base color map. The next here is the normal map that is used. We have also a height map, a roughness map, and then you have a metalness map, which is for the shininess for how reflective the material is. So that is pretty amazing. And of course, it also tells you this is more than just a JPEG image. Another interesting detail here is for the 3D view, you can also select different kind of objects. So you can have this kind of fabric over a ball, but also different kind of clothing items and something that even looks like a backpack. There's also a GitHub page for text to texture. And of course, I'm going to link all of that below the video. Next, I have a tweet from Kirsten Zirngibel for you. This is about image to 3D. And I have to say the results is really nice, very sophisticated. This is done by a company called CSM. And you can go right away today to the website and check that out for yourself. Look at that. You have here different AI generated images, but also images created by people. And when you mouse over that, you see a 360 version of how this was turned into an object. So that is pretty stunning and very interesting. And often also the body shape and the dimensions fit to the characters. So that is very impressive. And of course, also because of the image, the character is already textured. Interesting detail also here is that the AI is figuring out how the backside of the object is supposed to look even though the AI doesn't have any information about the backside. But as you can see here with these models, that is working pretty well most of the time. Now, of course, sometimes like with this character here on the left side, it doesn't 100% work. So he is more very round and fluffy. But in this case, he is pretty flat. So the AI didn't figure out the correct dimensions for that. But in a lot of other cases, for example, the woman here on the right side and a mouse over that look at how detailed that is and how this has become a complete upper body with the shoulders, with the back, the long hair in the back, all of the kind of nice information in there. So that is very impressive. 
Also, when you have a look here at the image of the vase right next to the woman, you can see that the vase is actually a dark vase on a dark background. Yet when I mouse over that image, you can see that the AI has figured out a very nice separation of that vase and then also created it in a very nice way and applied the texture also in a nice way. Again, figuring out the background of how this has to look. And last but not least, I have another tweet here by Pierre Chevalier. And he is talking about a prompt creating this kind of photo collage. So when we look at the images, I have to say that they are actually pretty impressive from what he is getting as a result. Of course, I was inspired by that. So I did a little search on the internet and I found this post here. Again, I'm going to link that below the video. This is in Danish, so you might not be able to read that, but you can always right click in your Chrome browser and then simply select translate to English. And this is going to translate the whole page into English. But actually, you don't need to read all of the text. The, the more interesting information here is to scroll down. And here you can find different results and also different prompts that have been used with that. You can see what kind of results you can get from that. I've tried it for myself and got this as a mood board. And here we even have a mood board where we have a bigger image of a chair and then these smaller images. So all of that is actually pretty nice. However, I also experimented with that inside of Stable Diffusion, inside of Automatic 1111. Here, the prompt functions a little bit different. Now, one thing I want to suggest to you is to try to either not use a negative prompt or use as little as possible of a negative prompt and also be short in the positive prompt and don't describe scenes that because then you only get a single scene. And when you describe objects, write it as a multiple of objects. So for example, in this case, I'm talking not about car design, but car designs. And I'm having in my prompt white and gold. So the color combination and then sci-fi car designs, collage, mood board, high quality film grain. I'm using the epic realism model for that. And look at the beautiful design I got from that. Now, this might not be as good as with Mid Journey but it is still very stunning and it can give you some nice ideas. And also try it around with other prompts. Here we have different spaceship designs. I also have different sci-fi characters in orange and teal. Now sometimes the face is also orange, but it's quite okay. Here we have white and gold cyborg characters. I'm especially happy with this one. Again, this one has been created with epic realism. And because we only have five different characters in there, also the face is good. This is using high res fix to upscale the image to give it an extra quality. I also tried other mood board for design options. So that was pretty fun to do too. So my friends, let me know in the comments what you think about all these amazing AI news. And also let me know if I missed something, if there is something else I should talk about. And of course, also don't forget about my live stream tomorrow. We're going to dive deeper into these things. We can discuss them and you can also suggest other things we should look at. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. See you tomorrow and thanks for watching. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah. <laughs>